quite a few of you asked to look inside the Daytong SRB2 Auto Woodpecker Blanca after my recent video. Now I'm not an electronics expert and probably can't shed as much light as other people on this and I'm usually not in the market of tearing things down, but because you asked, I've opened up the case and thought I'd show you the insides. This little black box helped alleviate the massive amounts of interference caused by the former Soviet Duga radar over in Chernobyl, which was affectionately known as the Russian Woodpecker. If you want to check out my videos on the Russian Woodpecker, then I'll link below and at the end. Another quick point I thought I'd address is that I get a lot of flack from certain people for calling it the Russian Woodpecker because it was in Ukraine and built by the Soviets. The reason I call it the Russian Woodpecker is because that is what it was known as the world over back in the 1970s and 1980s by shortwave listeners, radio amateurs and the media. So this box is basically an audio frequency notch filter which is a type of filter that attenuates or reduces a specific frequency range in an audio signal. They're also known as band stop filters or band reject filters. This notch filter worked by allowing all frequencies to pass through except for a specific frequency range, which was attenuated or blocked. Now remember we're not talking about RF frequency, we're talking about audio frequency, so it would take the woodpecker's audio frequency, regardless of the transmit frequency, and simply notch it out. The 10 Hz audio frequency of the woodpecker's sound was being taken by the device and being dropped down into nothing, as if it was falling down a hole. The woodpecker had an audio frequency of 10 Hz, so anything at that same tone would disappear down the filter too. The idea was, if you notched the 10 Hz tone out, then you'd hear other signals on the frequency. As long as the audio portion of the signal of someone else wasn't the same as the woodpecker, you'd hear it. It's nothing more than a simple audio filter, so it would have worked, but wouldn't get rid of the woodpecker completely, because there's nothing that could be done about the RF signal side of the transmission. It did a similar job to a graphic equaliser, using these banks of capacitors. These types of filters are commonly used in audio applications to remove unwanted frequencies, such as hum or noise, from a signal. They can also be used to create special effects in music production, and a lot of these components can be found in those sorts of devices. Now, I'm not an expert in electronic components and circuit boards, so I can't give you any more on how this worked from a technical standpoint, so I'm expecting some juicy and detailed info in the comments from you guys, now you've seen it, to give us some more insight. One person who is an absolute whiz with this sort of stuff is my friend Paul, who runs the YouTube channel Noximan. Recently I sent him a huge haul of CB radios that have seen better days, and he's done an amazing job restoring them for me. He's also just built a mind-blowing Synad meter from scratch using his own design printed circuit boards, high quality components, and assembled by him personally using his expert knowledge. He produces some quality videos and I'd really urge you to head over there and subscribe to his channel if you like range tests, radio restoration and anything from CB radio to UHF handhelds. Sorry Paul for the shameless plug but you deserve it. Cheers.